seen better days. After a hot start to the season, the Bronx Bombers have dropped 13 of the past 17 games, including just getting swept by the Cincinnati Reds. Since June 15th, they have the worst record, ERA, and run differential in the entire league. They now sit two games behind the Orioles for the AL East lead. But despite the struggles, Captain Aaron Judge, he's not worried. Take a listen. You go back at all the past World Series champions, they've always hit a little skid at some point, and I think that's what you know, kind of defines the team is, you know, how we respond out of this. You know, how are we going to, you know, take the next step to kind of get things going back in our direction. Jessica Mendoza joins us now. Great to see you as always, Jessica. How bad are things with the Yankees right now? You know, it's, it's pretty bad. <laughs> it's especially <laughs> the last three weeks. When you think about, you go back to their series against the Red Sox, they lost the last two games from there, and it's been everything. I think that's the most frustrating part is the starting rotation that was so darn good leading into the middle of June. Then the bullpen, because the starting rotation has lacked so much, the offense outside of Juan Soto and Aaron Judge. But to me, the exclamation point was really last night's game against the Reds. Trent Grisham in center field kind of just slowly going after a ball, ends up bobbling it. Runner takes second base, and it's like, what is happening right now? I mean, it's every single thing, and you can tell the frustration. The biggest thing to me is the fact that they're always behind. They're starting rotations, giving up runs from the get-go. They're not scoring first, so it seems like they're always, and then the boos start coming when they're at home. That's, to me, where the frustration begins. That Christian play was embarrassing. I mean, that was just absolutely horrible in so many ways. And, I mean, look at the last 17 games. So the OPS, Jessica, is 699 and a 6.69 ERA for the staff. But here's the bright side for this whole thing. I can't get too worked up for it in July <laughs> when the Yankees are still 19 games over 500. You know, they did so many things so well early in the year. We see teams that go through these kinds of stretches, but at the same time, it, it, it doesn't feel alarming until we get to like a, a 30 to 35 game stretch. Is that, <laughs> is that fair or am I maybe being a little Pollyanna there? No, I think honestly, because of how bad it's looked the last two weeks, it also gives a lot of credit of how darn good this team was for so long earlier in the season because their record still is what it's at. I mean, they're right behind Baltimore in the East. And, you know, Aaron Judge, I think, said it perfectly. Of course, he's the captain. He's going to say the right things. But after the game yesterday, he's like, look, you look back at, like, a lot of historic – good World Series champions, and there's a stretch like this. You're going to find two or three weeks, usually in the dog days of summer, where they struggle, where everything seems to kind of fall apart. And, of course, that's what they refer to when we're talking October and they're on their run and they're like, hey, those days in July when we couldn't seem to field, we couldn't seem to pitch, we couldn't seem to hit, that's what we use as our motivation to then get to October. Oof, I'm looking at that since June 15th stat, 4-13. and 13. <laughs> <laughs> To score 91 runs in that stretch, I, I, I'm going to try to take the, like, half glass, half full approach. So, Ben Rice looks like a great starting, you know, look, look, great leadoff hitter for them. In this series against the Red, Alex Verdugo hit the ball well. Juan Soto hit the ball well. Austin Wells should probably be their starting catcher, but that's enough for, like, the nice stuff. Um, this seems really troublesome because their lineup is not very good. Outside of Juan Soto, outside of Aaron Judge, which the last couple of years is recent they brought in Juan Soto, they've had to rely so much on Aaron Judge to generate their offense. And when you don't have that infield production, I mean, Alex Verdugo is uh, – I mean, even he's kind of fallen off as of recently, which is the issue I have here. How much longer, despite the fact that we're in July right now, how much longer can you expect – to be, be a competitive team when you have this many issues. And the injuries to Giancarlo Stanton, to Anthony Rizzo, certainly magnify things. Mm. But we're almost at the trade deadline. And, Jessica, that's, like, where I go on everything. Like, what do they do? Is there – obviously, it's a huge series against the Red Sox going into the All-Star break. You want to have some good vibes that way. But what can they possibly do, if anything, here? Because – there are a lot of Yankees fans in my mentions right now hitting the panic button, <laughs> sell the team, sell out all the assets, Stanton included. That doesn't feel – it feels more like a knee-jerk reaction for a team, as you mentioned, is that many games over 500. 
Yeah, I, you know, to me, the concern today, it feels like the offense, yes, and you mentioned the struggles perfectly, but that's actually not my biggest concern going forward because I do feel like they're playing from behind and you're seeing defensive swings. You're seeing swings when it's five, six runs like put on top of them that they've got to make up for. This will be a different team when they can score first and get it going and get those injured players back to add to the top of the lineup. Anthony Volpe, I think, will be back in that lead-up spot. I don't think Ben Rice is there to stay. So I think the offense isn't the biggest concern. When you look at the trade deadline, they got to get pitching. I mean, and get in line, by the way, because <laughs> that's what everybody wants right now. But to me, it's they can't start from being in the hole. And that begins and ends with their starting pitching. So that will be what they look for at the trade deadline, more so than getting more, more bats. When you're losing, too, you know, you don't need drama. And how about this? Aaron Judge's personal hitting coach, not team, personal, ripping the team's player development on social media last night when this team has dropped 13 of 17 now. If I'm Aaron Judge, that guy might not be employed much longer. <laughs> I mean, honestly, what are we doing here when you are adding to the drama when things are not going well to begin with. That's just absolutely silly, yeah. silly to happen. Uh, okay, Jess, let's talk a little big picture. We're about midpoint to the season right now. Who is your favorite to win the World Series? I mean, I'm going to stick with who I had from the beginning. And, and the reason is the Los Angeles Dodgers, I mean, coming in, I mean, come on. Like, how are they still not the team that everyone at least expects? Now, are they the team that will win the World Series? There's so much that we can tell between now and October that will dictate that. But as far as expectation, I mean, in spending the money, as far as the talent, and when they get Yoshinobu Yamamoto back, you know, when they get Mookie Betts back, I mean, this team, and he is ridiculous. Ridiculous. Shohei Otani, Freddie Freeman. Like, it is mind blowing how talented they are. How did they not win a World Series? They realize it. They understand the expectation. They are hurting with having a lot of their stars injured right now. But am I worried about them? No, because those guys will be coming back. They're going to get Clayton Kershaw. Walker Bueller will get right. I mean, Dustin May's coming back. So, this is a team that. They don't even need to act as much on the trade deadline because they're going to get so much back in the second half. It'll be like they went and traded for them. Yeah, here's the thing, though. Dodgers, as much as I want to believe in them and should believe in them, you know, they've got the one championship over this stretch that should have been a lot more. And as much as I call the Lakers championship the summer camp championship, I kind of have to do the same <laughs> thing with the Dodgers. Phillies, to me, right now are the team because you have Real Muto, Harper, uh, banged up. They are in a position, Schwarber's out right now, and yet their pitching has been absolutely lights out. Their rotation, Sanchez, Ranger Suarez is unbelievable. Wheeler, uh, just absolutely phenomenal. They've done a great job one through four there, and guys like Alec Bohm have stepped up. I mean, he's the all-star starter this year at their base, and he's been unbelievable for them. I think the Phillies right now are going to be very difficult to beat, and they... They kind of have a little edge to them, too, which I love. I was looking at the odds this morning, and, of course, you know, Dodgers, Phillies, you can throw Baltimore in there. Mm. The fact that you still see Atlanta's odds as high as they are and having to overcome the Ronald Acuna Jr. injury this year, and it makes me wonder, can they do what they did the last time they won the World Series when he was out relying on your starting pitching, having a formidable bullpen? What, the, what moves they make at the trade deadline feels like they're going to be big buyers here. They, I'll, I'll go ahead and say that they're my long shot. I, I like Chris and I like Jessica's answers uh -huh. a little better, but don't keep them out of the conversation. Keep them in the mix. All right, Jess, great seeing you as always. Plenty more baseball to watch this season.